folks, um, an absolute pleasure uh, to be catching up with um, Laura. Laura, hello. Hi, hi, how are you? Marvellous, yes, still here. Um, and uh, <laughs> wonderful to catch up with you, and I, and I appreciate you're so busy. Um, JDC Ambassador Role just been announced for Laura. Um, how did that come about? Yeah, um, I've been speaking to Steve, actually I've speaking to Steve as well about some of the, the mad darts on the amateur side of things as well. Right. And uh, yeah, Steve, Steve contacted me, asked if I would, you know, consider becoming an ambassador. I, I didn't hesitate. Oh, it's such an honour. It's, it's an honour to be asked and to be able to have, potentially help, you know, get more, more players and especially, you know, more girls uh, into the sport. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. I mean, you know, the minute we're on pause. Um, but yeah, um, we've got a lot of girls in the academy system. Um, and I guess, you know, with, with support and advice you can give online or offline or whatever it is, uh, getting them through to the, to the next level. So the tour events and the competitions. Yeah, and that's, that's the goal. It's to, to, to get more girls interested. Quite a lot of the time you find, you know, that you're, as from my experience, my parents played. So I kind of picked it up and went from there it'd be great to actually kind of reach out a bit further and those that haven't actually been in contact, had much contact with the sport will, you'd, will actually watch perhaps myself on Sky or watch Fallon at the Alexander Palace, that kind of thing. And it hopefully will start to inspire more, more girls to take up the sport. And the JDC, the academy is what they provide, not just a safe environment, but a really good structure um, to, to, to progress within the sport. So you, you touched on that about your... Um family being sort of dart orientated uh, did, did did that just come naturally i mean you've been playing what pro professionally or since about 2011 sort of properly well yeah it's i basically used to travel with my mum um right. when i was about 12 um so i'm a little bit older than my sisters so i used to go with my mum and they used to go on a day out with my dad and i just used to throw i actually probably started chalking before i started playing yeah and um yeah, so I, I kind of got involved and the youth manager, Andy Scott, uh, was my youth manager at the time. Right, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Um, he, yes, of course. So Andy uh, contacted my mum on a, I think PBA, it must have been a, a yeah, <laughs> he contacted my mum on a Saturday night and said, oh, I've seen Laura throw, we're short a girl for, for a youth match. Does she, would she want to come and play? So I travelled from Hampshire to Cunham Morgan the next day, never really having played before lost my first match, won my next two three days later after practicing over the summer, then I uh, got picked for England. It was three games into the next one and never ever looked back since. Had breaks because of family and other, other commitments. Um, and I'd say probably for the last three or four years is when I've really taken up the kind of going on the tour because it's quite intense. You know, we're, we're traveling all the time. We were, yeah. I, wanted, I, I, was, I used to dream of the day where we could have a couple of weekends at home and now I'm like, yeah, no, I've had enough. I want to get back out and play. <laughs> Oh God, everybody I speak to says that. Um, so, but you've got your own family as well. So playing on the tour, because um, from our side, it's always the parents taking the kids. But with you, it's, I suppose you, you play, but you've got to do something with the children or, or your wonderful husband has to sort of look after them, I suppose. Yeah, it's a bit of a juggling act, as you can appreciate. I mean, sometimes the girls are with us if it's appropriate. Um, Neve's played, Neve, who is my eldest daughter, and actually Isla as well, my youngest. They've both played in a couple of tournaments when we've gone, you know, over to the Isle of Man. Um, yeah. yeah, so that I think, yeah, so they are, Isla's just turned nine, but she was eight when she played, and Neve's ten. So they, they, they enjoy playing and coming along with us. If not, I've got an amazing you know, support network. My, my parents will look after them. Yeah. Um, Aaron's dad drives them to my parents, which is an hour away, and then picks them up, and they're they're all home, tucked in bed by the time we get back on a Sunday. <laughs> but but what what you said there? What a wonderful sport we've got that that you you can enjoy it with your kids, your husbands, your mums, your dads, and 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 obviously well, there's been a lot going on within the amateur game at the minute, um, and and the, there are so many organisations that are going to offer stuff for all ages. I mean, it's 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 looking pretty good. Yeah, it's fantastic. Fantastic. I, I, I can't say, you know, you, you've got a social aspect, you can, you know, it's something that's brought families together. I met Aaron through darts. Um, that's how we were both playing for Hampshire Youth at the time. And yeah, that's how I, you know, I met him 20 odd years ago. And we're, you know, still happily married, two children now. And I know lots of people in the same, you know, that have got together, you know, through, through darts. Yeah. Um, but like, like you say, my, my father-in-law plays, my parents still play. It's, it's, it's an ageless game. You, you, can, you can pick it up from, you can, 
just look at Gerwin Price. He didn't start playing until, you know, you know relatively recently in, in the term, in the big scheme of things. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now four time televised major winner. So, you know, it's, it's, it's there for the taking. You've just got to embrace it and, you know, join in with the sport. Yeah. Some fantastic opportunities, I know. And, and thinking about the adult game, uh, well, over 16s, um, something coming up for the ladies uh, in the next few days um, in um, yeah. Barnsley. Is it Barnsley? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we're all travelling off to Barnsley. Um, I'm, I'm leaving early Friday morning, so we've got uh, an opportunity to get a place in the Grand Slam on the Friday. Uh, one person can, uh, can, you know, secure secure that opportunity. And then we've got another four competitions uh, coming up, which, um, yeah, which is the Women's Series. It's completely new, and there's two places there for uh, the World Championships in January. So it's it's, you know... Completely, it, it took me by surprise. Let's just take it that way because I never expected the level of progression this quickly, especially yeah. with the situation as it, as it is with COVID-19. Um, it just seems that darts are still kind of pushing forward and just bringing the, you know, now bringing the women's game along with it. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, it, it just seems to be, I mean, obviously it's a bit condensed at the minute, I guess, because obviously we've missed half the year, but it just seems like there's something going on. I mean, we've got the Premier League and then we've got the, the, the Women's Series and then we've got European tours. There's all sorts of stuff going on. Um, yeah. But in, <laughs> underneath all that, um, as you'll, you'll know through with, with what Aaron's um, helping and getting involved with, with, with sort of the amateur side as well. So it's almost like we're, the foundations are being rebuilt, ready for this horrible thing to go away and we can get back to, <laughs> to playing and talking to each other. Yeah, yeah, and I know that already Aaron's got uh, teams and organisations in our area that want to join up and sign up for the Mad Mad Darts. Right. Um, it's just a case, isn't it, of, yes, great, we just can't tell you when all of this is really going to, you know, it's going to be able to start up as, as some kind of normal, at least. But, um, well, like you say, once it's all stopped and we can get back to normality, then hopefully there's quite a lot of the groundwork that's been done already now yeah. so that we can kind of set off kicking and screaming <laughs> so as, as far as darts concerned not every youngster is going to uh, make it as an exclusive club or you know to be a professional but um media wise you know you, you, you you're thrusting and holding microphones now so ha there's another opportunity in the game for for, for girls and boys but ha how did that happen how did that come about yeah, so it was kind of lying right tight. It's all about timing, as Wayne Mardell kind of often <laughs> often reminds me. Um, so I think back in January, not not this January, the January before at the World Championships, I was offered the opportunity uh, to sit in the commentary box with Paul Nicholson and um, I think it's Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason uh, with yeah. the final of the women's. Uh, women's world championships right uh, very very nerve-wracking I'll be honest never done anything quite like it but um, my background obviously I was doing quite a lot of writing and reporting at the time with with regards to the the, the amateur game as a whole so mm. um, thoroughly enjoyed it uh, was lucky enough that Colin Lloyd um, one of the who's one of the spotters for the, the PDC or for Sky Sports he heard it and kind of put my name forward as a possible possible oh. commentator and he, yeah, that's, that was just coming up a year when I did my first one at the uh, Grand Slam right. in Wolverhampton. So it's about so, uh, timing yeah. and about who you know, I suppose. And, and, <laughs> and Well, it is, isn't it, really? Life is like that. Um, and um, so the, 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 the now, we see you on the TV, you're playing, but you, I, you do lots of other things. I've got the latest copy of uh, the Darts World magazine, <laughs> and you're in that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I do. I, I, I'm sure you can tell and all your, all your viewers can tell I've got a real passion for darts. I absolutely love it. Like I say, it encompasses so much. Um, and for me, it's now all encompassing in my life. But uh, um, I'm not complaining. It's brilliant. Yeah, darts world approached. Um, I've got a background of, of writing, as I said, you know, as I mentioned before, of writing, reporting. So that's... Um, being utilised there and like you yeah. said with the commentary um, actually play it's fitting in the playing now <laughs> that's the thing but it's, uh, it's I think great what, to have what is what is lovely to see is that you know for those young ladies out there that you know um, you, you, you've got the family so you've worked through that you've worked through whatever uh, that brings you know juggling the acts <laughs> and the, the grandparents and all that um, and then the the extra um, getting into the media and all sorts and you play yeah you know, it's, it's it's you're a great ambassador for for the youngsters coming through to think do you know what 
it might not work out that way, but I can do it that way. And if Laura can do it, then I'm sure I can have a go at it or what, you know? Um, so great, great uh, last few years for you. Yeah, it really has been. And that's what I'm hoping that people can see. I've always been a champion of the fact that if you can make darts a bit more visible, so, you know, going back when I first started playing, there were no women's matches ever really screened on the TV. Mm. You know, you, you could see it if you went along to the competitions, but you don't, didn't actually get it on TV. And, you know, for the PDC and Sky Sports to then bring in female competitors in the World Championships, it's made it more visual. And then when Fallon won, that just blew up. None of us could quite believe how much media attention it got. Yeah. But off the back of that, off the back of that, then obviously we've now got, girls can actually see, oh, this is an opportunity for me. I, I can go and play this. I can do this. And the same with myself, you know, in front of the camera or in the commentary, that there's more avenues opening up. Um, it, it, this is a sport that should be embraced by all ages, you know, all, all demographics, male, female, whatever. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's one of those sports that we can all enjoy. Well, the, 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 again, for, for those that, are, that perhaps are watching that are younger, there are no physical um, barriers, is there really? I mean, you know, it, girls and boys seem to compete very well until they get to about sort of 13, 14. And things do change a little bit. I mean, boys get, you know, it's life. We grow up, you know, we change. Um, but going through the ranks, there, there shouldn't be any difference. I mean, at all in, in competition, that is. No, no, and it's often a debate you've... you've I've... I've listened to both sides of the debate and I think really it's just a case of there are more men that play than women um, in terms of our competition perhaps we you know we we play each other but it's it's playing perhaps some of the men now to make ourselves more competitive where you know I, I would expect like, sometimes to get beaten more often than not playing men than I would women but I'm mm. hoping off the back of that then I will I will become better myself and yeah. that's that's how that's how I tend to look at it but so uh, yeah I don't think anyone should be put off yeah I think there's just there there's there is something there for anyone. As you say, we've got, we've got an amateur side, which is now looking like it's, it's going to start booming once we get back playing. And you, with the JDC, you've just got this wonderful journey that you can take. I mean, if you take someone like Keen Barry, for example, goes through the JDC. I know it's, it's the best example, isn't it? Because he starts off with the JDC. He's done brilliant there. Yeah. Uh, kind of moving, moving through to the development tour. He's now secured his tour card through that. And now he's going to be next time be playing in the 128, the, the pro tour. So there is a definite way that people can progress throughout yeah. if they want to, and they've got that ability. Oh, brilliant. Uh, we've always said, you know, it's, it's something that I think um, Steve, who created all this for the kids, you know, it's what we're the ultimate, I suppose, is to see a, a champion of sorts come through the very ranks. And, and Keane is, you know, what, a couple of years back now, part of a, an academy system in Ireland um, with Keith doing a great job out there. And, um, you know, he's, he has sort of made his way virtu virtually to the top. It's fantastic. And also, yeah, you say has. about the, the amateur game, I mean, from a ladies' perspective, we've got the series going on this week and what have you. Um, I believe that, um, that MAD are going to be doing some live streaming of ladies' events as well. Um, so if we're getting it at the top end and in the amateur level and at junior level, it's got to be rosy future for, for, for the young girls and ladies out there, surely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's, it's kind of the injection it's been, it's been looking for. Um, ultimately, prior to this, it was very, it's very hard to become a professional. It's hard to become a professional in any sport, let's be mm. honest. But for the women's game, even if you're at the top of that game, you, you would still struggle with perhaps the prize money because we were always on the more amateur side as opposed to the, you know, the PDC and that side of things. So the fact that these new opportunities are opening up and you've got this, like I say, this great channel that you can utilise to yeah, progress yeah. within this sport, then hopefully we'll be seeing more Lisa Ashtons, more Fallon Sherricks, you know, more Anastasias, you know, yeah. as, 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 we, as the years go by. It's exciting for me and I, I don't even play. <laughs> <laughs> um, you say you're travelling up to Barnsley on Friday? I am. Isn't that your birthday? <laughs> there comes a point in someone's life where you don't celebrate them as much as you used to. <laughs> well, we're not mentioning numbers, I just said it's your birthday. <laughs> no, it is. It is. So what better way to uh, celebrate my birthday than actually playing darts, uh, you know, darts against people in an actual tournament. I'm quite looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm sure if Laura cuts herself, it's it's green, sort of red and black blood. I think you you, you dart, <laughs> darts through and through. Are you born like it? <laughs> yeah, quite possibly, quite possibly. Your your house must be mad. I'm mad about darts. Mad about darts. Um, 
Laura, um, obviously um, appreciate the time you've given us today. And um, we'll hopefully uh, see plenty of you on the, on the stage or in front of it with a microphone. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wangle my way onto that stage somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Laura Turner, thank you so much. No, no problem. Thank you. Take care.